We've got an update for you now on our top story this morning. Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib saying she will not go to the West Bank after Israel lifted a ban on her entry. That reversal based on a request from the congresswoman to visit her grandmother. Tlaib tweeting this just moments ago. Silencing me and treating me like a criminal is not what she wants for me. It would kill a piece of me. I've decided that visiting my grandmother under these oppressive conditions stands against everything I believe and fighting against racism, oppression, and injustice. Let's bring in Mark Thiessen, Washington Post columnist and Fox News contributor. Mark, good morning. Good morning, Sandra. So now, after all of that, <laughs> she's not going. Yeah, no, I, this works out perfectly for Israel because what Israel is basically saying is, look, if you want to uh, have a humanitarian visa to come visit your grandmother, you are more than welcome uh, to come to the state of Israel. But if you want a platform to advocate for the destruction of Israel and what she has called a one-state solution, uh, you're not welcome here. Uh, I think that's a perfectly legitimate position to take. Look, I, I think all the outrage about this is just so overwrought. The, the, it, why is it okay for them to boycott Israel, but it's not okay for Israel to boycott them? <laughs> they literally, they are advocating the, the BDS movement, the boycott, sanction, and, and divest movement, advocates the economic destruction of Israel. Why would a country, why should, is a country obligated to allow people in who advocate its destruction? On balance, I think they probably should have let them in. I think it was a mistake because look at all the publicity they're getting. This is what they wanted. They wanted the controversy. But I don't think there's anything wrong with the decision that Israel made to say you're not welcome in our country if you want to destroy our country. The tweet I just read was her most recent tweet confirming she will not go. Now that Israel yeah. says for humanitarian reasons we'll let you visit your grandmother, she says she won't go. What she tweeted just before that, about one hour ago, was this. When mm -hmm. I won, it gave the Palestinian people hope that someone will finally speak the truth about the inhumane conditions. I can't allow the state of Israel to take away that light by humiliating me and use my love for my city to bow down to their oppressive and racist policies. So where <laughs> does that leave this, Mark? It leaves it that we've got two anti-Semites in Congress uh, who advocate the destruction of Israel. I mean, you know, the, the people are the, the critics of the Israel's decision are basically saying it's wrong to uh, the, 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 it's wrong to say uh, they're elected members of Congress and it's wrong to bar a member of Congress. The problem is not that Israel is barring members of Congress. The problem is is that we have two members of Congress who are virulent anti-Semites. And the fact is, there's that. Look, there's there's anti-Semitism on both the left and the right, and everybody and both sides are responsible for policing their own movements. Donald Trump needs to needs to consistently reject the the alt right and the anti-Semites and the people who are marching on the streets of Charlottesville saying Jews will not replace us. But the problem is, anti-Semitism on the left is not skinheads on the streets of Charlottesville. It's members of Congress. It's people in the halls of power uh, who, who have an influence. Omar uh, is a, a member of the House Foreign Affairs Committee. She's actually involved in setting Israel policy. That's outrageous. Well, and the Democrats can't bring themselves to, to condemn her for what she said about Israel. Ilan and the Omar's ban stands this morning. Yeah. And here she is responding to that in her own words, saying, quote, Trump's Muslim ban is what Israel is implementing. Sadly, this is not a surprise given the public positions of Prime Minister Netanyahu. Now, there are members of the Republican Party who stood up against this ban and said that these congresswomen should be allowed entry, including Marco Rubio. He tweeted, tweeted this out, quote, I disagree 100 percent with the congresswoman and the author of the anti-BDS bill we passed in the Senate. And he referenced the fact that he is the author of the anti-BDS bill in the Senate. But yeah. denying them entry into Israel is a mistake. But denying uh, being blocked is what they really hope for all along, yeah. all along in order to bolster their attacks against the Jewish state. So he made the case that they should yeah. be allowed in, Mark. Yes, yeah, so I agree with Marco Rubio because he's making the point exactly that this is what they wanted. Uh, they, if you look at the TikTok of what happened, is they, they knew they, they introduced a, BD, a, a resolution supporting the BDS movement, the mm -hmm. boycott of Israel, knowing that there was a law in Israel saying that they could be banned for that, and then announced that they were going to Israel. So I think they were taunting Israel into making this, into banning them, because that's what they really want. They want the publicity. But look, she's, I mean, it's ridiculous to say this is a Muslim ban, it's an anti Semite ban. 
you're not being barred because you're a Muslim from coming. There, there are many Muslims who live in Israel, uh, and uh, you're being banned because you're an anti-Semite. Hmm. And th I, all these, you know, I look at all these Democratic presidential candidates who are, who are, you know, outraged, outraged, shocked that this is happening and criticizing Israel. Where were they? When it came time, when when Omar made those anti-Semitic remarks, saying that they, that basically people who support Israel are bought and paid for, it's all about the Benjamins, and Congress couldn't, the Democrats in Congress couldn't bring themselves to pass a resolution condemning her. I know Police your movement. I know that's a lot of what you write in your piece. Uh, here it is: the rise of anti-Semitism on the left in the yeah. Washington Post. Uh, you you wrote this piece that broadly, more broadly, speaks about the problem yeah. of anti-Semitism yeah. rising across the world. Here's the words of Steve Scalise, another. Republican member of Congress by attempting to travel to Israel with an organization that includes members who support terrorism against Israel. Reps Omar and Talib made it clear the only intention of their visit was to spew hate and advocate for policies that would actively undermine the Jewish state of Israel. <laughs> this is an incredibly controversial decision and the reaction continues to pour in this morning. Final thoughts, Mark. Just simply, Steve Scalise is 100% right. I mean, to, uh, Rashida Tlaib used to write for uh, for Louis Farrakhan's newspaper. Has written for Louis Farrakhan's newspaper as a virulent anti-Semite. She she had a picture taken with a with a terrorist who killed three Israeli soldiers. She advocates for a one-state solution, which means the destruction of Israel. So Israel is under no obligation to to let her into the country to use this to, to use their welcome their openness as a platform to advocate their own destruction. All right. Well, this story will continue this morning. We'll be following it. Mark Thiessen, thank you.